you see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. I'm Andrew Krasowski, and I am the owner of Gym Rat Performance Training. So I came up with Gym Rat Performance Training. Uh, I it's, it's kind of like a just happen type thing. Um, you know, basketball players, people that live in, in a weight room or um, train a lot, you know, it, it's kind of a common term to say uh, they're a gym rat. They're always in the gym working on, on their skills or on their physique. So I knew gym rat would kind of like epitomize what we wanted in terms of the players we work with. We wanted to be dedicated and serious um, and, and be kind of living in the gym per se. Um, I also am a certified personal trainer, so uh, I, I wanted our business to be not just working with basketball players, but also working with athletes uh, of all different backgrounds, football, uh, we work with people that have gotten into bodybuilding, uh, we've worked with people that uh, have played professional soccer, um, I've worked with D1 Sports, which is a big uh, training company that a lot of NFL players and NBA players work with. So I kind of wanted gym rat performance training and, and not so much personal training, but, but performance training. We're, we want these athletes to be able to perform uh, to their highest level. And in terms of me getting involved in uh, personal training, I was training a lot of basketball players. I had a lot of, of people saying, hey, you know, can you work with my daughter? Can you work with my son? Um, have college players calling me, hey, can you work with me and help me get better? And I was doing this a lot and, you know, started becoming a little bit more than just a hobby, um, a little bit more than just making a little extra money on the side. And I said, you know, this is start, starting to turn into a business. And the way that the uh, personal training came about was I said, well, I'm already working with all these kids and, and young adults on basketball. Why don't I take this a step further um, and get certified and actually have the credentials. So I ended up uh, doing my certification through NIDA, which is the National Exercise the Exercise Trainers of America Association. I really like them. They, uh, they're accepted all over the country. YMCA uses them a lot. So uh, I went on to go get that certification. Uh, I ended up doing that shortly after uh, I started Gym Rap Performance Training. Um, and then when we started doing our business, I started bringing on people that would work for us that I also wanted to have that certified personal training background uh, to make sure that you know people that were in the gym with us knew that not only could we teach them the sport that they wanted to do, but we also um, were insured. Uh, we also knew what the, the body needs to be moving like, the mechanics of the body, um, and being responsible from that perspective. So I grew up in Carnegie, Pennsylvania. Uh, I went to Carlinton High School which is uh, part of Roslyn Farms, Carnegie, and Crafton. Growing up, I played a lot of sports. Uh, I played soccer as a kid, like I think everybody does to get started. I uh, played flag football, hockey, um, and then I eventually got into basketball, which kind of became uh, something that I was very, very passionate about. So I ended up, I guess I could say this in a roundabout way, um, I had a couple scholarship opportunities out of high school to play college basketball. Uh, I decided I wanted to be a teacher and I wanted to go to the University of Pittsburgh to play. So I had an opportunity to go to, I actually ended up, I passed on a couple Division II scholarships uh, that I had partial scholarships and one full scholarship actually, but they didn't have a teaching degree. So I ended up going to uh, Pitt Greensburg and I went out there um, played in the summer league and all that stuff and I said wow you know I thought I would have liked Pitt but it just was not a good fit for me so I played in there like I said I played in the summer league I um, decided it wasn't for me and I decided that I was going to take a year off and really try to find a school that would fit with with what I wanted to do be a teacher uh, and play basketball 
So I ended up working for a year and going and taking classes at the Community College of Allegheny County uh, out in Monroeville and did my prerequisites, you know, English comps and, and all that type of stuff. And uh, what's kind of unique about my story is after doing that for a year, I was kind of uh, getting really, really involved in uh, my church at the time. A good friend of mine, who's my godfather, was a Catholic priest, and I was helping him out at his church, which was out in that area. And he kind of encouraged me, he said, hey, you know, have you ever thought about getting into some type of ministry, whether it be the priesthood or um, working with, with kids in youth ministry? And I, that had always been something that was interesting to me. Uh, but never really thought I would do it as a career. And uh, I ended up finding there was a program uh, that the Redemptorist Fathers, or a group of, of priests and religious brothers, Catholic, in New York City ran, uh, where you could go to St. John's University in New York if your grades were good enough, and then kind of discern and think about, do you wanna you know, go further in this? Do you wanna potentially be a priest, or do you potentially wanna be a religious brother or work with the youth? So I, I qualified for a scholarship, a full scholarship at St. John's University through this program. And that's where I ended up going to college at. Uh, I, I did my undergraduate uh, in philosophy and pre-law with a minor in theology. Uh, and then I went off and said, hey, you know, I kind of like this. Um, I ended up kind of working all through New York. I worked in the missions, uh, inner city missions in, in Harlem, uh, in the South Bronx in Newark uh, with a group of Franciscan friars. So that was an amazing experience, got to influence a lot of kids. And one of the things that was kind of a common thing for me was using basketball throughout that entire time. Eventually I found myself uh, going to graduate school at St. Vincent College and Seminary in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. A lot of people know that where the Steelers practice. Uh, I entered the monastic community up there. I was actually a Benedictine monk for a couple of years uh, thinking, you know, maybe I want to go on to this. And that's how I got involved in coaching. Uh, their coaching staff up there, uh, Kristen Zawacki, who uh, passed away a couple years ago, was an amazing coach, uh, probably one of the all-time winningest coaches at St. Vincent, NAIA, I, I want to say probably Hall of Famer. I mean, she was an amazing, amazing lady. Uh, tragically passed away a couple years ago around Christmas time and I was shooting you know with the kids the students on campus and she said hey you know she saw one of the monks playing basketball um, she's like you're pretty good did you play at all and we kind of got talking and she said hey, I'd really like you to help out uh, coaching the team here um, so I got involved with coaching the women's team up there uh, then their men's coach actually asked me to help mentor some of the guys on on their team and do off-season workouts um, so that's how I kind of got involved in, in collegiate coaching. Uh, coaching actually happened before I got in, even started Gym Rat. Uh, like I mentioned a little earlier, I got involved in coaching when I was in graduate school uh, up at St. Vincent with, with their men's and women's basketball program. Um, and then after I decided uh, to leave the seminary, I decided I wanted to get married and, and still be involved in coaching um, and ministry. I actually uh, was asked, my last year in seminary, I was working at a Catholic school teaching religion. And a couple of the dads found out that I had a pretty extensive background in, in coaching and playing and all this type of stuff. And they asked me, hey, would you be interested in uh, helping our, our team, eighth grade girls basketball team? Um, and I was like, yeah, you know, it sounds, sounds great. Um, and I ended up, it's kind of a funny story. I ended up finding out later that the head coach of that team at the time uh, he was asked by uh, the principal or one of the pastors, hey, you know, one of our, our seminarians, uh, he likes basketball and uh, he wants to, you know, help your team out. And he was thinking like, oh, I just what I need some, you know, seminarian that doesn't know crap about basketball. Well, then he comes to find out I knew a lot about basketball. We ended up going to the uh, district finals and qualifying for the state championship that year. Um, and he, uh, his name is John Fontana, he's a friend of mine today. Uh, he actually is one of the coaches at Upper St. Clair High School now. Um, he ended up hiring me to help train his daughter. She was actually our first uh, gym rat client ever, Mira Fontana. She's now a teacher. Um, but he said, hey, you really need to go into coaching more. Like, this is something you're really, really good at. So he kind of planted the seed for me to get involved in that. Shortly thereafter, I ended up coaching at my alma mater, Carlinton High School. Uh, ran the 7th and 8th grade boys program down there while coaching AAU. Uh, basketball for high school boys, 
Um, and then shortly thereafter, I ended up getting a job at Carlo University where I coached the women's team for a couple of years. Uh, Coach Andrew and I actually met when he was uh, studying to be a priest at St. Thomas More. And uh, he was helping out a little bit with their girls program over there and I was part of the boys program over at, the, over at that school. And uh, he, uh, so just being in practices and seeing him around and seeing how he interacted with, with just about everybody was, was, uh, was a fun experience there. Um, and then we kind of lost touch with some things there until he started finding out that he was doing more individual private lessons with kids. And I actually brought my son at one point, Andrew, to start being coached a different way. Sometimes we had a hard time with father and son interactions with teaching him uh, how to play basketball. So. Uh, Andrew and I had the same thoughts on how the game should be taught and uh, so I figured even if he's gonna hear the same thing maybe he'll listen to <laughs> coach Andrew and I think he did uh, but he just didn't want to practice as much but then coach Andrew and I were talking about just uh, life in general a lot of times of how our beliefs are with, uh, with with basketball with people and I think that friendship developed into more of a basketball uh, thing as well and uh, so we pretty much were talking at every level because he was still at the college level on how they do things there throwing out ideas for each other with that and I think when he asked me to jump on board and help him out here I was pretty pretty excited about that and uh, now it's like I don't know how his wife feels about it, but we're talking pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis about something dealing you know, with basketball. Uh, whether it doesn't even have to be our stuff, it could be other people's stuff. So, uh, you know, it's a real, real good friendship we have here, even if we didn't have basketball. Um, so I left Carlo, uh, Penn State Beaver, which actually has won two USA CAA national championships. Their coach, Tim Moore, called me up and asked if I'd be interested in coaching there. So I did that for a year. Uh, and then shortly after that, I ended up taking a job at Point Park University as the first assistant coach there. And I was there the past two years. Um, and then just, just recently, I took a head coaching job at a school called Propel Montour, which is a high school program. Uh, My name is Casey Carroll, and I'm a member of Jim Rack Performance Training. Pennsylvania. Um, when I was born, my dad played basketball in my crib, so he kind of destined it for me to play basketball. Um, the year I was born was Kobe Bryant's rookie year in the NBA, so he was the first person I started watching whenever I picked up a basketball. And um, I had a little mini hoop in my basement, so whenever I'd be watching games of his, like if I saw him do something that I thought was pretty cool, I would be trying to copy it on my little mini hoop, make me feel like I was a, another version of Kobe. So that right there just kind of started my love for the game. So I went to Hempwood Area uh, High School in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Um, it was a 4A high school at the time. Uh, I started all four years of varsity from my freshman year on. Uh, I was leading score almost every single year. My, uh, my, my junior year was whenever I hit the thousand point mark, uh, which was a big uh, big thing for me. And then my senior year, uh, I was able to break the all-time scoring record at Hempfield. Um, I scored 1,900 points uh, my whole high school career. Uh, I was a four-time uh, Tribune Review Terrific Ten uh, nominee. I was a two-time Post Gazette Fat Five uh, nominee, and my junior year I was third-team All-State, and my soft or my senior year I was uh, second-team All-State. Uh, after my junior year, I started getting a lot of Division One interest. Um, I had offers from Navy, uh, Liberty, and UNC Wilmington were like my three big ones. Um, unfortunately, all three of them ended up passing on me. So going into my senior year, I really didn't know what I was going to do as far as college went. And then uh, my last AU tournament in Louisville was whenever I met uh, Coach Ben Botts, who was then an assistant at IPFW. And I really didn't know too much about the school. I didn't even know they were Division One, so I really didn't give it too much thought. 
Um, my dad was actually the one who kind of convinced me, like, hey, like, this is a really good school. They are Division One. They almost made the NCAA tournament the year before. And when I heard that, I was really intrigued. So I started paying a lot more attention to them. I uh, started talking to Coach Bots almost like every single day we were texting and calling each other. And then finally he was able to get me to uh, Fort Wayne for a visit where I met Coach John Kaufman and the rest of the, uh, the staff. And I met my teammates at the time. And uh, it just felt like a big family. I felt really comfortable there. And I remember uh, right as we were pulling into the house, uh, coming back, I told my parents, like, this is where I want to go, I'm going to commit, and I ended up committing there, and then after my uh, senior year of high school, that's where I went for, uh, for college. So, my freshman year at uh, IPFW was really a wake-up call for me. Um, I went from being a guy who was dependent to play every single minute in high school, dependent to score all the points, to, uh, as a freshman in college, I was lucky if I got, like, 30 seconds in a game. Um, just not being the best player on my team anymore. Um, not being the most athletic, not being the fastest. It was really a, a wake-up call and something I really wasn't used to. So when I realized I wasn't gonna play a lot, instead of you know putting my head down and pouting and talking about transferring or anything like that, I just decided I was just gonna work. And I just grinded every single day. I was you know the first one in practice. I was the last guy to leave. Um, off days when other dudes were taking days off, I was in the gym getting shots up or something like that. On the road, whenever they would have road games and stuff, you know, while other guys were chilling, getting ready for the game, I was doing cardio with my assistant coach and just uh, staying fresh and staying ready in case my number was called. And I carried into my sophomore year where I was able to finally start and be a part of a, one of the biggest upsets in school history, beating number three Indiana at the time, uh, which was a really big deal, something I'll never forget. And that just kind of carried me on um, through my senior year, just every year, just working hard, just finding something that I could get better at, whether it was ball handling, being able to finish at the rim, uh, my agility, becoming a better defender, uh, just finding something that could take me to the next level. And it really helped. And um, without the support of my parents and obviously without God being on my side, I would not have been able to have the college career that I had. So I'm thankful. So, Kaysen Harrell, a uh, uh, really impressive basketball player. Uh, he actually, I've, I've kind of tracked him a little bit on social media. Uh, every once in a while we would see articles about this kid from Hempfield High School, which is up in the Greensburg area, right outside of Pittsburgh. I kept seeing these articles about this kid, Kaysen Harrell, uh, as I was coaching. And this kid's putting up like really big numbers, Pittsburgh kid. And they end up twice knocking off Indiana University. Uh, his sophomore year, I think he had like 14 against, 12 or 14 against Indiana. They upset him, and Indiana was ranked number three in the country at the time. Uh, and then the next year, it was like deja vu. Um, they go on and um, they beat Indiana again, and he has, I blow him out. It was like 92 to 72 or something. He has 28 points. And I'm like, wow, this, this kid can play. Um, so he graduates, we're following each other, I think, on uh, Twitter, and I reached out to him and I said, hey, you know, I, I see you're looking to pre play professional basketball, uh, would you be interested in, in doing some training with us? And he said, yeah, actually, I'm looking for uh, a trainer here in Pittsburgh, uh, and I've been doing some research on you guys, and I've been really impressed with what I saw, so I invited him down, um, and he's been a part of our, our program ever since. So after college, whenever I decided I wanted to play professional basketball, um, my first goal was to try and make the NBA G League, and I was able to score and try out with the Fort Wayne Mountains, where I was able to uh, be invited to the training camp for that year, which was amazing. Uh, I made it through the first cut, got cut the day before the season started, which was a bummer. So then I just came right back with Andrew, we started working, just kind of waiting to see what else would happen. And about a week later, was whenever the head coach from Cholester Basketball Club in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, hit me up and asked if I wanted to play on his team and uh, I prayed about it you know I talked about it with my, with my family and we decided that was going to be a good fit for me so I ended up going there for about five months. Um, being out of the country was amazing especially being in Ireland somewhere I've, I've always wanted to visit never really got the chance to. Um, the people there were very 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 friendly um, I made a lot of friends there that I still talk to even to today. Um, my teammates were amazing my coaches were awesome and just having that experience of playing professional basketball was um, just a huge blessing and I'm, I'm praying that um, you know the work I've been putting in this past summer since I've been home will carry over to another uh, contract somewhere else. So there was a point um, in my uh, waiting of becoming a, a pro where I just really was starting to get frustrated with not having any looks, not, ha not having any offers or anything. Um, I was seeing guys that I played against or played with in college getting signed 
really early and I'm still back at home waiting for something and I just remember like every time I would come into a workout with Andrew like he'd always tell me like listen like your, your offer is going to come your time's going to come just keep working keep trusting God and you know he's going to make something happen for you so he really just helped me keep my head up during that whole process um, and even now with me still waiting um, for any offers he's still encouraging me every day like you're, you're, you've been putting the work in you've been patient you know God's going to honor that someone's going to give you a chance as soon as you get that chance, I know you're going to make the most of it. So he's really just helped keep my head up during this whole uh, uh, issue and just waiting and just trying to find, you know, what I'm going to do uh, next. So Kaysen, uh going forward, I think, is, is going to be a person that makes a profound impact in whatever he does. Um, Basketball-wise, we're in such a bizarre uh, state in the world right now. Uh, a lot of these professional tryouts or playing overseas for Americans and, and, and all that type of stuff is, has been put on hold because of all the COVID stuff. Um, so he's kind of in a tough situation right now. Uh, his dream ultimately is to play in the NBA G League and, and hopefully get a, a shot to play in the NBA. Um, and I've, I've been around a lot of basketball players and I definitely think he's, he's good enough to do that. Um, and he uses basketball to impact a lot of the kids that, that he's around. So we have Kaysen come in and do some training uh, now for us when he's not training with us. Um, and the kids absolutely love him. They love the, the life lessons he's trying to teach them through the game of basketball. Um, they love that he takes an interest in their, in their personal lives, which is pretty cool to have a professional basketball player that um, you can connect with, you know, shoot him a text message and he'll give you some feedback. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think he's, whatever he decides to do, whether it's in the game of basketball or um, just in the game of life, um, he's gonna be very, very successful and have a, a really profound impact on the people that he's working with. Uh, you know, Andrew's relationship with, with myself and uh, Kaysen, who was one of our, you know, best trainees that, that we work with. And when he first introduced me to him, I was kind of excited. I know he was kind of excited about, hey, we have, we have somebody who really likes our ideas and really wants to work at, at something, and he's never really met anybody like him before. And to be honest with you, I haven't either. I mean, Scott, Kaysen is uh, an athlete that I've enjoyed working with. And no matter what I give him, he makes me work. You know, he's uh, he makes he challenges me. So whatever we are doing, I'm always thinking about, okay, what can I do to challenge Kaysen to get him better from what he needs? So a lot of our stuff may be developed around the younger ages, uh, but when he's always around, he's a sponge. He wants to absorb everything he can because he uses a lot of our stuff when he's coaching uh, kids also. So uh, it's been a great experience to work, working with him and, and learning from him and seeing what I can do pushing myself. So things that... Tom and I do well together as coaches is I think we both understand uh, our strengths and our weaknesses um, and we challenge each other to actually get better at things that we're not good at um, and, and that's I love that I, I don't like always saying like this is what I'm good at this is what you're good at and we'll just stay there it's like okay you're good at that I want to get better at it and, and vice versa so, um, you know, Tom really handles a lot of our ball handling entities. I do a lot of our, our moves and uh, post-up work. But uh, over the last two years, we've really, I've learned a lot from his techniques and his um, workouts. And I take stuff from what he does and put it into mine. And he does the exact same thing. So having um, uh, a, another coach that you work with that actually knows how to uh, make you better as a coach it is an amazing thing to have. Uh, something that he's really taught me is just to be patient. Um, not getting frustrated with the process, not getting frustrated when things aren't going your way. Um, just continuing to put your head down, continue to grind, and just always just trusting God. And um, it's stuff that I've, you know, I've already kind of known before, but being in that situation where, you know, it's, it's, it's getting difficult, you're getting frustrated, like stuff, like stuff's not going your way, like it's easier said than done. And um, having someone like Andrew and like Coach Tom in your corner just continually reminding you every single day uh, really helps you to be able to focus on doing that a lot more. And um, now, like, even with waiting, like, I'm not as frustrated as I was last year. And I'm actually just enjoying just staying home and just working and, you know, making sure I'm even more ready than I was last year whenever my opportunity comes. Okay, so how has 
creating a company that that has really changed or helped people that we work with how, uh, their lives how's that kind of enriched my life um, in a lot of ways um, when, you know when you get phone calls or text messages or, or direct messages from kids you know thanking you for um, what you taught them over the summer and how it translates into a game that's that's awesome I love that um, but to go a step further when you get uh, players that invite you to come to uh, their graduation parties or stay in contact with you after they are done playing basketball. Uh, we've had players invite us to uh, come to their wedding or um, have worked for us. Those relationships, that, that's the best part of all of it. Um, you know, when you can create a business that, that really is not just a business, but it becomes like a fraternity, uh, a group of people that are kind of all supporting one another, uh, because of a common interest in, in, in basketball, in athletics, um, and then that branches out into um, enriching relationships, that's amazing to me. And that's something that uh, I never take for granted. I really think is, is the best part of, of owning this business and, and getting it off the ground were those relationships and will continue to be those relationships. So the number one thing that has trans transferred, I guess you could say, from coaching basketball into running a small business, for me, uh, gym rap performance training, uh, persistence. Uh, you, you have to be really persistent and really um, self-assured in what you're doing. Uh, I remember when I started my business out, my dad, who's, who's been a great fan of mine, he's like, you know, what are you doing? Like, is this going to be your career? Or like, you know, you're, you're, you have a train, basketball training business. And as I've told you before, my dad's not a, a basketball guy or anything like that. So this kind of didn't make sense to him. And I, I remember telling him, Dad, like, hey, just I'm telling you, this is going to be something that I can make a good amount of money doing and I can help a lot of people doing it. And he's like, all right, you know, like, uh, we'll see. He was one of those type of deals. Uh, but I remember a couple years ago, my dad said, hey, you know, you were right. You know, this is something you, I'm really proud of you. you you've become uh, very successful in how you're running this business. You've got some good people working around you. Um, the kids that you're working with are having a lot of positive results. So um, it's persistence. You, you just have to be uh, committed and really sure that this is something that you want to do. Um, running a small business or any business is not easy. You, there's a lot of uh, unsung hours where you're working on you know your books or you're trying to plan stuff or people cancel on you and you have to figure out how do I deal with that type of stuff um, and a lot of it's learning on the fly you know a lot of things that you think are gonna work don't work um, a lot of things that didn't work you learn from so that you don't make that same mistake again uh, and then the other thing I would say you know coaching is a uh, profession where you're constantly if you're good at coaching you're, you're you have to be great at teaching and relationships so for me having those relationships um, having the wantingness to be able to teach kids uh, teach players things and really being passionate about teaching um, that that has really really helped me and I've met other people along my journey of running this business that have been just as as passionate about it as I am and that's really helped our business where it's not been about me So ever since I've been working with Jim Rat, um, I've been trying to share with almost every high school kid I know, every high school kid I can reach out, like these guys are for real. And if you're a serious hooper and you really want to play at the next level and you have goals that you want to reach and you need someone to help you reach those goals, Jim Rats is the place. Like they take no days off, they're willing to go anywhere, they're willing to work at any hours, they're willing to do whatever to make sure that you reach your goals. And if you're out there and you're trying to find a place to work out, if you want to train with guys that actually know what they're doing, Jim Rats is the place. I've seen so many trainers kind of like name their business after themselves, and, and that's great if that's what they want to do. But I never wanted this business to be like Andrew Krasowski basketball training. Um, I wanted this to be about the, the players we work with um, and the team of people that we have working together. Um, and, and if I can steer the ship, great but I really don't want the, the credit um, that, that it's all about me. Um, and and you can, if people go and watch our social media and stuff, uh, very rarely will you see me, you know, or other people on our team mention me. Uh, we talk about our staff, we talk about the kids that we work with, that should be the focal point.